I'll just show you in the diagram. Okay, so this is the diagram. You can see here we don't have any clock information. Are you able to see any clock information? No. Okay. So first, what is the first step in asynchronous is? So the master is going to place address and command. So what is address? Indicates to which device it is requesting. Okay. Maybe the device ID. If it is memory, it is indicating the memory location. Okay. Command. What is command indicates? Is read or write. Okay. And also, what size of data it has to read? So the amount of data it has to. get from the slave so that also it is specified in the command so that information so can you see here this line indicates address that is passing through the address line 
okay and light color that is blue color light blue color you can see this line indicates that command so if you want you can write it separately also okay or you can combine both the signals and send so that is also okay you can just represent however you want but in the textbook they have used this method so now after placing this the master is going to send the master ready signal okay can you see here this red color line indicates master ready signal that means now master is placed a request on the bus after that after some time so whichever the device that recognizes that means you need to understand that so whichever the device that are connected here that match it will just capture the address that is sent through the address line okay whichever the device it is matching with that address it will recognize okay it will recognize so that is me i need to respond to the request that is sent by the processor then what the device is going to do it will process that command information whatever it is sent okay accordingly the data will be placed on to the bus okay and it will place the data on to the bus and also at the same time you can just see so it is informing that slave is ready so this signal is sent to the this is control signal okay it is sent through the control line to the processor indicating so whatever the data it is requested it is placed on the data bus and immediately after some time so the master is going to capture the data that is present on the data bus whatever the data it is available on the data bus so the master it is going to capture means it is going to read the data and it will be placed into either register or it will be stored into the processor buffer okay for processing or to perform particular task so this is how the asynchronous bus works you can just observe you need to explain with respect to time information at time t not just observe the time information at time t not what the master is doing master places the address and command information on the bus next at time t1 okay so after placing so immediately it will not like activate the signal master ready signal it will take some amount of time then at time t1 master is going to activate master ready signal to indicate that so whatever the request that is made it is available on the bus and that is informed to the slave okay master assert the master ready signal master ready signal is at, asserted at time t1 instead of t0 at the same time it is not doing it will take some amount of time yesterday we have discussed that is propagation of signal information there will be a delay okay as soon as the information is placed on the bus it is not going to reach the device okay why because why why it is not able to reach the whatever the data it is signal or data it is placed on the bus at the same time because it has to propagate the signal has to propagate to the device there will be an interface okay it has to go to interface then dma controller if it is there then it will go to the io device so for that it will take some amount of time yes so that amount of time or whatever the time it is going to take to reach the specific device we call it as propagation delay is it clear so what is this operation this is input operation so how you can just change this asynchronous bus for output operation yes output operation input means the master is requesting the data from slave and whatever the data it is requested slave is place the data on the bus and it is sent to the processor or to the master so how it is going to do for output operation yesterday i told for synchronous output operation what do you mean by output now first what do you mean by output write operation okay so for write operation what and all it requires for write operation so now processor want to write some data onto the display what and all it requires it requires the address yes no and it requires command and also what data to write it requires data to send so now instead of only the address and command now along with that for write operation it has to send the data okay to write it on the output device 
are you getting so along with this data you will be getting one more line here so that indicates the data okay this is called data this is for output operation and once it is captured it will be there this data will be there on the bus for some minimum amount of time where that particular device should able to capture and store it to in its buffer okay so how that much of time the data should be available on the bus it should not be just uh, place the data and remove from the bus no it requires that data should be stay on the bus for some amount of time so that the particular device it is going to capture the data and store into its buffer got the difference input and output or read and write so in the exam you may get either input or output diagram so now what is the advantage you can find here the difference between synchronous and asynchronous what was the major problem with synchronous time what what do you mean by time very nice time clock huh? see in the synchronous bus we have a say stop yes listen here in the synchronous bus what happened how they have fixed this clock information or time one clock means how they fix the duration how long it should be so that is measured in terms of whichever the device that works at slower speed so that particular speed will be set for the one clock cycle that means even though if device is working at faster rate it will be set for slowest speed so that is one important drawback with respect to synchronous bus okay so that we can overcome using asynchronous bus there is no issue if it is between processor and printer according to that speed it is going to perform if it is keyboard so depending on the speed of the keyboard the operation is performed that is in case of synchronous bus so other than that what are the major differences so eliminate the need for synchronization between sender and receiver okay so it does not requires any synchronization between sender and receiver and also in case of synchronous there is no particular signal sent that is uh, uh, slave is responded to the request that is sent by the master or not okay but in this case it is going to respond to the request by activating the signal called slave ready that is one advantage using synchronous bus so can accommodate varying delay automatically are you understanding this meaning it is going to vary the delay accordingly that means if it is between a processor we know that all the devices it is going to work in their according to their speed but in case of synchronous what we made so whatever may be the device that are connected to the bus which is the slowest speed of the device so according to that the clock information is set but in case of synchronous if it is between processor and printer okay so what is the speed accordingly the clock information is going to set okay if it is between processor and keyboard so it is going to adjust the speed accordingly so that is one major difference or advantage over the synchronous bus it can accommodate varying delays automatically using slave ready signal master ready and slave ready signal so that is handshake as soon as the master is sending the signal the slave is going to respond is it clear so these are the main two advantages of asynchronous bus over the synchronous what is the drawback here i mean disadvantage so that is data transfer rate with the full handshake is limited to two round trip delays okay so this is going to be one more the drawback or limitation of this asynchronous bus that is every time so if the data to be transferred between the master and slave 